As we continue to talk about continuationism and uh, and tongues and prophecy today, Pastor John, would you like to address anything about the abuses that you see in the charismatic movement today? Yes, I do want to say something about uh, charismatic abuses, but (laughs) we really need to keep in mind that every charismatic abuse has its mirror image in non-charismatic abuses. Nothing I'm going to say is unique to charismatics, and I'll point that out as we go along. So any charismatics listening here, don't feel picked on because I know that in some of these cases, the non-charismatic church is more guilty than the charismatic. So here, here we go. Um, I'll just mention two. Um, doctrinal abuses and emotional abuses. So here's the first one, doctrinal abuses. And all of these, by the way, um, are in the Bible. I mean, I don't think any abuse started in the 21st century. They were all there in the first century, which is wonderful, because now we have guidance for how to think about the abuses. And uh, 1 John 4, 1 and 2, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. Now, what, what's he doing? He's giving a doctrinal test for a spiritual claim. And the test is, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is the doctrine of the Incarnation testing supernatural claims. So my first observation is to say there are many doctrinal abuses in the charismatic church where uh, experience is elevated above doctrine, and doctrine is made minimally important. I think that's a huge defect in many charismatic churches. The fear is that if you try to study the Bible with a view to assembling a coherent view of doctrine, you're going to quench the spirit and you won't have as much vitality in your heart because the mind and the heart are at odds with each other. That's a mistake, I think, and it's it's a, um, a, a an abuse of experience to make it the enemy of or the alternative to to doctrine. Now, I'll give you concrete experience. I have been in prophetic meetings with charismatic groups where the Bible was treated like the priming of the pump of phenomena. So what you really want in this room is some fireworks, okay? You want somebody to fall down, or somebody to laugh, or somebody to tremble, or somebody to uh, raise their hands, or somebody to hear a word of extraordinary prophecy, like the man in the red shirt is going to Argentina next week, and nobody could know that, but the prophet. You want all that stuff to happen, and so what do you do with the Bible? You use it like pouring water into a pump, and everybody knows you don't care about this text. You don't care about this sermon. You are using this sermon to get us ready for the fireworks at the end, which we used to call ministry time. Wherever I saw that happening, I knew we were in trouble, right? I knew that that no matter what kind of fireworks were coming, they were going to be skewed. The use of them, even if they were valid, they were going to be skewed and misused because the the speaker, the one who had charge here, was not God-centered, Christ-exalting, Bible-saturated. And so here's, here's what I do, Tony, very practically. I don't go on a warpath against charismatics. I go on a crusade to spread truth. I am spreading gospel-centered, Christ-exalting, Bible-saturated, Calvinistic truth everywhere, and I'm going to push it into the face of every every charismatic I can find. Because what, what I believe is, if they embrace the biblical system of doctrine that's really there, it will bring all of their experiences into the right orbit around around the sun of this truth. So that's my first take. Yes, there are doctrinal abuses, and we should care about them. Here's the second one. Emotional abuses. Elevating emotional criteria for guidance over biblically informed commitments. And the text is 1 Corinthians 14, 29. Let two or three prophets speak. 
let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent. For you can all prophesy, which is a strange thing to say if it's scripture level infallible truth, but you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all be encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. Now, what does that mean? That means some of these guys in the church were saying that their emotional ecstasy trumped biblical principles of good order. Hook, you can't tell me to be quiet. I've just got a word from God, and he's, he's vibrating, and he's going to say this word from God. And Paul responds to that kind of emotional trumping. He said, look, if you're a true prophet, if you've got the Holy Spirit, if you're real, the spirit of a prophet is subject to a prophet. You can sit down <laughs> and wait your turn. The, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are patience <laughs> and kindness and meekness and faithfulness and self-control. So sit down, Mr. Prophet, and wait your turn. And I just think there are a lot of people who, who don't think that way. They, they don't think that biblically informed principles of good behavior uh, can trump the ecstasies of, of a person who's, say, speaking in tongues or, or prophesying. So uh, they can. I mean, we, we should let this text inform the way we relate emotion and action, emotion and, and order. It's... Uh, what we want is biblically informed wisdom. We want the Word. Thinking truly about the Word. Application of the Word governs life in the church, not the emotional sway of some strong person in the moment. Brothers, Paul says, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil. In your thinking, be mature. So he, he wants there to be five words with the mind rather than 10,000 words in a tongue, and he wants there to be order and care for the good of the church governed by, by biblical truth and mature thinking. So those are two, Tony. Um, doctrinal abuses and emotional abuses need to be addressed in the charismatic church. And, <laughs> lest, it, lest I leave it unsaid, there are emotional abuses in the non-charismatic church, namely the absence of emotion, which is probably more deadly than the excess. Wow. Yes, there is some food for thought. Um, thank you for that, Pastor John. And thank you for listening to this podcast. Email your questions to us at askpastorjohn at desiringgod.org. You can visit us online at desiringgod.org to find thousands of books, articles, sermons, and other resources from John Piper, all free of charge. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening.